The New York Declaration on Refugees and Migrants is once in a lifetime chant. If you go back to 1948, when the Universal Declaration on Human Rights was adopted as a declaration, a little bit like a political declaration like the New York one, at the beginning people thought, well, this is just an aspirational document, it doesn't have much value, and what it did, it revolutionized human rights. And I think we hope that the New York Declaration on Refugees and Migrants will do exactly the same that it will actually revolution revolutionize the way that the international community engages with refugees. It is true that the Comprehensive Refugee Response Framework contains a lot of practices that we have been involved in for decades. But there are some new things in there as well. For instance, the focus on refugees and host communities, the fact that the development actors have to come in much earlier, the fact that international financial institutions have to come in much earlier. The fact that it's not just about a piecemeal approach to health, education or host community support, but that it actually requires a comprehensive approach. In fact, the novelty of the New York Declaration, it talks about a whole of society approach in order to respond to refugee issues and to the needs of refugees. And that's great because it actually reflects reality. It's the host communities that often provide the first support. They need to be supported. It is the local authorities, it's the mayors it's of cities that require the support that they need. It is the local civil society organizations, the local institutions that are particularly confronted and they need support.